So I figured I'd walk through and give you a visual uh, and save you some time. We have a simple beam supported from two points, point A and point B. Uh, it's in static equilibrium. This means that the force is going to be zero. Uh, we have a force acting at uh, eight feet away from point X. Point X will be put into a table. It is increasing at intervals of eight feet. Away, away from point B, it starts at zero. Then it will be eight feet away, then 16, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the uh, distance between FG here, at X distance, and force here will always be eight feet, and that's denoted here in the diagram. Now keep in mind, this third force, this is the weight of your beam, will always be calculated by the length of the entire beam, which is 72 feet, divided by two. Now keep in mind also that this is not gonna change, this, uh, the way you calculate weight, uh, regardless of how X changes, because the center of mass of your beam will always be at the middle of the beam, which is length divided by two. Uh, to start the problem, you want to obviously draw a diagram something like this uh, to help you visualize, but then also you want to continue on and uh, set up an equation at equilibrium, which means it's going to equal zero. Here we have two forces forcing up, uh, acting upward, the reaction point to A and the reaction to point B. These are going to be upward, like I said. Uh, and the opposite forces, notice the negative sign, pushing against those forces are going to be the force F, uh, which is given, W, which is the weight of your beam, also given. And force G, again, it's given in the problem. So you have all these numbers, you don't have to worry about finding them. Uh, and they're acting opposite to uh, what A and B are going to have. Uh, and that's shown here to equal zero. Uh, keep in mind something important is that there is no moment force. There's no rotation. These are fixed points. So you all, all you have to worry about is vertical forces. What's being pushing up and what's uh, pushing down. So here... Again, kind of resetting, just to get you a clear image, A and B are going to be the exact opposite of force weight and force G. Uh, that's not force gravity, it's just force G. Uh, in the problem, at least in my version, I'll write it over, uh, I guess I'll write it over here. Actually, I already written that. Um, your force G is 1,300 force pounds, your weight is 1,200 force pounds, and your force, uh, just force one or whatever, uh, is just 1,200. Uh, I don't know why these are both 1,200, just have them, don't get confused there. Uh, the last point I have to add is that this distance between force one, or whatever you want to call it, and uh, reaction point A here, uh, this can be calculated just by knowing what interval of X you're on, uh, and then taking eight feet into account, and then subtracting from your total 72. And obviously that's just kind of the equation up there, doesn't really matter. Uh, so if X was, if you're working with eight feet, which is the first example we'll do, um, you're just going to subtract 72 minus 8 minus 8, and you have your distance. Uh, so the first one here, we're going to start at x equals 8 to give you just a fresh idea. You have uh, your point of perspective starts at a here, so you're looking this way as far as distances are concerned. Uh, and you're saying, all right, the force of uh, reaction point A, how far is it away from my point of perspective? Well, right now it's zero. So that means our A is going to be zero. This is the distance away from your point. Now, you're going to go over and say, well, how far is this uh, point, this force F down from my point of perspective? It's going to be this uh, variable D, which we can calculate up here, uh, and that comes out to be 56 meters. So we have 1,300 pounds, 56 meters, and that's going to be your force, and of course it's negative because it's opposite to your reaction. Your force G is 1,200 uh, pounds force at uh, 64 meters, so that's the distance from here to this point, FG. And now 35 meters, you get that by dividing, again, like I said earlier, 72 feet divided by 2 is 35, and that's going to be the weight of your beam. That's not going to change throughout all your iterations, whether X is 8, uh, whether it's the total length of the beam or 0, it's always going to be 35 times the weight of your beam, whatever that might be. Uh, and then once you get to this point, uh, in this particular uh, setup, I'm solving for B, but I started at A. Um, you can see that 72 meters is the entire length of the beam. So this is my point that I'm looking at, and I'm starting here at my perspective. I'm saying this is 72 feet, and I know there's a force pushing up. So 72 times my point. Once you have this equation, you can simply plug it into a calculator, and I think I already did that. Uh, yes, I did. And you say your numerator, so you're going to divide this off. Uh, it's going to be the total multiplication, the product of all these, and then you're going to divide uh, that 72 over to solve for RB. 
and you should get, I mean, if your numbers are the same, which they might be, they might not be, uh, should be something around 2677.78 is going to be your RB in your instance. I'm going to check that that was the right thing. Yes, it was. Uh, and once you have this, it's pretty easy to solve for your other point because the sum of RA and RB is going to be equal to the force that is pushing down. Now if we add up the F, the weight, and the FG, uh, you should get, uh, I think it was the 3700. So simply just say, pull your total force, 3700, minus what you just solved. Don't write it again. Should just be um, your actual point to A. As you continue through the problems, all you have to do is plug in different X's, Make sure to change your lengths. Continue to solve for this distance D up here. Um, and it should be fairly simple, and you can subtract to find point A. Good luck. Hope it helps.